short video about trig ratios on the Cartesian plane. You're often going to be asked for the primary trigonometric ratios, sine, cos, and tan of an angle, and only be told a point that the terminal arm goes through. The point negative 6 and 8, for example, is in quadrant 2. I know that because it's a negative x value. You have negative 6 on the x-axis, and then you go 8 up on the y-axis. What's actually happening here is you're being told that the angle theta, which starts here um, at 0 degrees in standard position, goes through that point, and it can go on to infinity. But knowing that point lets you calculate a value of x, in this case negative 6, it was given to you in the point, a value of y, which is 8, also given to you in the, in the point, but you're going 8 up to get to that point, and it lets you calculate the value of the hypotenuse, often called r, as though it's the radius of a circle. The value of r here is based on the Pythagorean theorem. 6 is the length of one side of the right-angled triangle. 8 is the other one. You can do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, or in this case, a squared plus b squared, all square rooted, gives you the value of c. This gives me the square root of 36 plus 64. Just watch out the negative value of x squared gives you a positive. This is the square root of 100, which actually gives me a hypotenuse of 10. The value of sine theta is commonly y over r. But again, if this is the value of theta in terms of the angle, this is the related acute angle that you can use to calculate these ratios. Opposite over hypotenuse is the same as y over r. The y value was 8, the r was 10, and that reduces to give you 4 fifths, or 0.8. You can do the same for cos. Cos is x over r. That's negative 6 over 10, which is negative 3 fifths. And lastly, tan is opposite over adjacent, or y over x. y over x is 8 over negative 6, which reduces to negative 4 thirds. These are the exact values for the trig ratios for theta when theta goes through this point on its terminal arm. Shall we do one more? Here we're being given the point negative 8, negative 10. Negative 8 is over here to the left of the y-axis, and then you go down 10. It's down here. Oh, well, that kind of looks like a tick mark. That's negative 10 on the y. So my terminal arm goes through there. But you know what matters more? What matters is that x is negative 8, y is negative 10, and you can calculate r yourself with the Pythagorean theorem. Negative 8 squared plus negative 10 squared, 64 plus 100. That's the square root of 164. Most teachers are going to ask you to simplify that radical. It's the square root of 4 times the square root of 41, which is 2 root 41. Now again with the trig ratios, sine is y over r, or opposite over hypotenuse, relative to the related acute angle here. y over r is negative 10 over 2 root 41. Now that reduces, but also some teachers don't like it when you have a radical on bottom. They want you to rationalize the denominator. That's multiplying the top and bottom by root 41. That gives me negative 10 root 41 on top and 2 times 41 on bottom, that still reduces for me. That's negative 5 root 41 over 41. Can't reduce anything more. Cos is x over r, so you're going to watch me do the whole thing over again. 
negative 8 over 2 root 41. You can reduce this right off the bat if you want. That's negative 4 over root 41. I reduced the 8 and the 2, see? But I still have to rationalize the denominator. I end up with negative 4 root 41 over regular 41. Lastly, tan is y over x. Now these are whole numbers. Negative 10 over negative 8 actually gives me positive value for tan. Now that makes sense to me. I know something called the cast rule, which tells me what's positive in each quadrant. Cos is positive here, sine is positive here, they're all positive here, and only tan is positive in this quadrant. Well, the sine was negative, the cos was negative, and the tan is positive. Story checks out. Not too bad. The radical work might be intimidating, but you've probably done it before. Best of luck.